If you're just tuning in, we're discussing power dynamics in 2020, and we have Olakunle Shemion with us. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038463. Thank you so much, PK, for staying with us. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so you were you were going to conclude that thought on um, the question yes. I asked earlier. Yeah, so, so I, I think it comes to two things. Number one is education. Number two is education about options, not just education. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean? So academics is not, is not um, a solution here. Mm -hmm. It's a necessary tool. Then if you shift from that to what I was talking about, social media, we always need to have the end in mind. What is the end game? So, so that all of the noise on social media has to be maybe the earliest expression of a deeper strategy, right? The social media is not an end in itself. It's supposed to be a means to an end as far as active, activism or market penetration or democratization of an idea or an ideology or a philosophy is concerned. We must not cons confuse the tool for the objective. So for example, if you set up a website, a website is not a testimonial. You, you don't need to go and rejoice that you have set up a website. It's how many people will come and view the website that is your testimonial. You don't buy a hammer as a carpenter and then rejoice that you have a business going. You don't register a business and go share a testimonial that I have a business now. A business card is not a testimonial. These are all tools to an end. Because you start a podcast, it's not a victory. The victory is how many people will listen to that podcast. So don't confuse the tool for the objective. Social media is a tool. And so in your commitment to create an end, you want to be sure about what your tools are, what the process is, and what the tools of that processes are in the achievement of your end, so that you don't camp around the um, um, tool instead of focusing on the mission, right? So, so how do we do that? L like I've said time and again, Part of what is happening in the world today is the lack of education. The average human being lacks the education about the human condition, about life as a whole, and how to navigate inside it. Now, we've learned cl clearly now with the lives of people like Mark Zuckerberg, like Bill Gates, who did not finish tertiary education. It's now clear that first in class is not first in life, right? So people need to begin to transcend the limits of academics and begin to teach people, young people, kids, adults alike, the real issues, the real issues about life. And a top issue in life is about power. And let me run through how academic plays into options. I mean, how education plays into options, right? First of all, education must be defined as the ability of the human soul or the human spirit to one, experience its environment. Two, question it deep enough to identify the options that exist in it. And three, to know the ones to embrace amongst those options as a matter of supreme importance and urgency. Mm. So education is the ability of the human spirit to experience its environment, to question it deep enough to find the options that exist in it and to know the ones to embrace as a matter of supreme importance and urgency. By that definition, even a PhD holder may not be educated because he has test, passed the test of academics, but he still cannot experience his environment, question it deep enough to find the options that exist in it and then to know the ones to embrace as a matter of supreme importance and urgency. So, for example, I will come back to the young girl, for example, a young girl. I'm not talking about any particular young girl. But when people give you their own option, somebody says you can't get a role in a movie and we are going to pull you down. Sadly, the person is abusing his power, right? But that person that is receiving that presentation needs to understand that, okay, this is how you want your masquerade to dance. I can set up my own masquerade, or I can go find another masquerade. 
Options are infinite. So we must learn how to question stimulus, to question presentations, and find the options that exist in it. Mr. A is only a part to what is possible. God will never put your miracle beyond your reach. Mm -hmm. Neither will he put it in the hands of your adversary. You must have those as existential beliefs inside of you. So that okay, when people PK. come to pose your option based on their preference, you can navigate to something else. Yes. All right, PK, yes. um, uh, we could leave you to go on and on and on. And it's always interesting listening to you. But then, I don't know if I'm alone, I constantly get this vibe when I'm listening to you. It's like we haven't done enough or like we're not making progress, right? Um, so my question is, what really is the impact of, of, of protests? And also, uh, how will the social world affect um, the political? Because right now, we see a lot of the girl you're talking about um, you didn't mention a girl, but I know of a girl who came out online talking about how she. No, there are billion girls. You know, remember the Einstein story. There are billion. Yeah. We're people. talking about I'm the not, most talking about recent one. The most recent <laughs> one that happened last week. So uh, we've seen okay. a lot of protests, justice for Owa, Black Lives Matter, Southern Kaduna killings. So many protests going. What then is the impact of these protests, and also how will the social world, uh, how does the social world affect political space? So it's important that we have that noise. It, it spoke about a girl. It's great that the girl is talking. It's great that social media is talking. It's great that we have protests on the street, Black Lives Matter, um, um, and all of what is going on in the world. Social media plays an important role in um, putting the conversation before everybody. But my point is that social media protests on the streets and all of that, they are a means to an end. They are not the end. The end, for example, has to be stuff like legislation, stuff like policy. And, th and those things don't happen on the street, right? The street can heighten all of that, but there must be a, co a strategic commitment to see how to advocate to convert all of that energy into um, usable formats, right? And that is legislation, for example. Enforcement, for example. I don't know how, for example, you mentioned Nigeria. In Nigeria, for example, the, the Nigeria does not suffer from the absence of laws. So even if you agitate on the street and then they make all the laws, in Nigeria, it doesn't mean anything, right? The enforcement of laws is the problem in Nigeria. Not the, you see, in some other countries, they just need to make the laws. The enforcement is there. In some other countries, even if you have all the laws, the enforcement is still there. The idea that a billionaire who has done something terrible is because he has broken a law is going to actually go to jail. And the billionaire knows I am going to go to jail. And so he knows he's going to go to jail. So he's not going to try it. And if he tried it, it's fair accompli. It means that he has assumed a level of responsibility for whichever way he goes. So, so, so. The idea for me is that non-profits, for example, may need to go a step higher and know that creating food for people and welfare economics are not, and they are palliatives at best. We need to organize at a higher level by giving people the understanding of the human condition such that we have no testimonial because whether you kill me deliberately or you kill me by mistake, I am still dead. We okay. talk about therapy and how you want to help people. The greatest help you can give to people is not to get them into that circumstance in the first place. Okay, so PK, PK, sorry, yeah. I'll have to cut you because <laughs> we have to manage the time. So someone has asked a question. This is our, our viewer from London, Ade. He says, good evening. What category do you place Nigerian politicians that refuse to leave office at retirement age? Most are well-educated but still oppress um, the citizens. Now, this question, I had a quote that had written They are not that, educated. They are not educated. Yeah. But I have a quote. They are academically a, qualified. They are not educated. I have a quote that I have written down. Um, we know yes. that no one ever seizes power with the intention of relinquishing it. That's from John, um, George Orwell. You know, most times we think that when, when somebody has attained a, a position of power, it's very easy for... I mean, power is very intoxicating. There's nothing... I mean, everybody has seen it play out. Correct. So we know that, you know, linking this to Ade's question and my quote, how do, how do we now strategically move, you know, for the years that are coming ahead? Because if we continue like this, it means that 
We will be old. I will be old and we'll still have sets of leaders governing us, especially in the African terrain. So how do we change this thing? So is, that's a journey, and that is taking a stake in the options. And I, I think I should describe that real quick. Maybe I can try that in five minutes. So what we have to do, right, is to understand that at every point in time, there are three categories of people in society, three categories of people. There are the people that are around, which we call the masses. They are all over the place. They are the people you see every day, the masses. Then they are the people, the, the cultural shapers, the people you see when they emerge, the people you see when they are displayed, the people you see when they are, um, when they are released to be viewed. That is where actors are, TV personalities, CEOs, uh, political party, pol pol political office leaders, uh, political appointees, you know, um, CEOs of companies, actors, musicians. Those are the culture shapers. They are the influencers. The people we call the powers that be. The powers that be are the people who hold authority in an office. They shape culture directly. You guys, behind ways, you are the powers that be. You are part of the powers that be because you are culture shaping. You, you shape culture through, through the narratives that you put out. But you are the guys that we see only when you ascend into your office, into a role, right? But you guys control the masses that we see every time. So the first category is the masses. The second category are the people you see when they are displayed, when they emerge. They are the culture shapers, the influencers who control the masses. But both of them are arrested communities because they are controlled by a third group that nobody sees, right? Nobody sees them. Those are, some call them cabals, some call them power centers, some call them mafia, some call them power brokers, whatever power you, whatever name you call them. But they are the guys nobody sees, but they are behind the scene and they are the real stakeholder of power. So let me explain that politically, for example. So you have voters and voters are told not to sell their votes in most third world countries. Don't sell your vote. Vote your conscience. In fact, they are told, let nobody take your vote. Die for your vote, if possible. I mean, lose your life instead of allowing anybody to control your vote. And we celebrate that. Then, you, while you are rejoicing about that, there's some other people you don't see who are working on your options. Those people give you control over your choices. You are in charge of your choices. You are going to choose who will lead you. Yes, your voter's card is key. So your choice is your power. But those are scripts. Those are lies for the masses. The power centers know that they have arrested your choice by their control over the options. So, for example, I will not encourage people to vote as I will encourage people to be part of party administration. Because party administration is what gives you the options which you are going to choose from. So what is the power of your vote when you are going to make a choice between two fools? What is the power of your vote when you are going to make a choice between two ignorant machines? So your vote has been arrest arrested by the group who evolve the options, which is the primaries. So the primaries that ev 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 evolves the candidates. That primary that involves the candidate is a far more superior constituency than the voters. Themselves. Okay? Yeah. So, so when you want to make change, you don't just go and put budgets and noise and adverts encouraging people to change when you have to, to vote, when you have done nothing about how the candidates emerge. You should also send people into the political parties to go and apply their wisdom there, so that they, because that is where the victory is. The moment you evolve the right candidate, so in, in America, you have Obama and McCain. Both of them are good enough to be president in any country. But in America, they have to choose because the party administration has ensured that you involve two awesome candidates. But you see, what people don't know is that real power is not partisan. Real power is not partisan. Real power takes a stake in all the options. So whether you, you vote Republican or you vote 
Democratic Party, you are voting the power centers. Whether you vote PDP in Nigeria or you vote APC, you are voting the power centers. You see, it's the same thing in business. Some say I prefer Facebook. Some say I prefer um, Instagram. I don't like Facebook. It's too general. Well, whether you choose Facebook or Instagram, you are choosing Mark Zuckerberg. Whether you choose option. Honda or Lexus, you are choosing the same company. In Nigeria, whether you choose Pick Milk or Three Crowns Milk, you are choosing the same company. Whether you choose DSTV or GoTV, is the same company. The idea is we have to learn to take a stake in the options. And that is a journey of time, an investment of resources, time, energy, and money to ensure that we are strategic enough to know where to position. Positioning amongst voters is a weak commitment. Positioning amongst how the options emerge is the real power. So when we say we are Activity, we are we are advocating and we are organizing and all of that. We have to leave the streets and come to a a, a room yes. where we sit down to architect power and say how do we involve people in the environments that involve the options mm. because that is where the real power is. Wow, wow, I think <laughs> wow, I, I I can't even say anything again because I think PK, you have done justice to. I mean, there is a lot more things that we could talk about, but mm. I mean, time. I'm telling but my you, goodness, we haven't got time for more such an eye opener. Yeah. So, but but uh, but for us, in, in in conclusion, if we say that we want to position ourselves strategically, and PK, just one minute, <laughs> one minute, we want to position ourselves strategically for 2020, you know, or and beyond. Right, because coronavirus has changed a lot of things, and we are not we are not seeing it yet. But things have changed. World power is changing. What what should we be doing now? Gathering the information and doing the background work is that what I hear you say? Yes, I mean that's a, that's a symposium discussion. Definitely, one minute cannot solve it. Okay, but yes, you, you are right. We need to begin to have the right conversation already, which is good, right? Like Black Lives Matter is the right conversation because let me tell you, let me let me summarize the next 10 years for you. The next 10 years, I said this in January. At, and I, I think you were there when I said it. Yeah. You, were, you were in my conference when I said that. And I said that the decade is the rise of underdogs. The voiceless, the faceless, the nameless are going to rise in between now and 2030. And what it means is the fading of power as we know it and the emergence of power in ways we have not known mm. that is the summary of the experiences of the next 10 years and visionary thinkers should begin to take that very seriously to enter the decade has been tough we were hit by by coronavirus we are hit by 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 racist racist advo advocacy all over the world from nowhere yeah. in nigeria the the, the, the idea of abuse killings, is yeah. rising all kinds of things all over the place there's, there's so much happening just to get into the decade the gates of the decade has a contention going on there we should not take it lightly mm. you, you you nearly had an accident yesterday you see we are in sensitive times yes and, and 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 people need to be more alert and to understand that everything you are seeing on the large scale on the at the macro level are also speaking to your experiences at the micro level yeah. we need to be more alert and more engaging and to and to be more discerning and to invest our time and energy constructively and, and strategically but, but for time, I, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll keep it there. Thank yeah. you yeah. so much, oh, yeah. PK. Wow. Such an amazing time. Oh, it. Sansi was going to clap. Yeah, I was like, I, <laughs> thank oh, you goodness. so much, PK. So, Nasser. Thank you. In conclusion, are we are we <laughs> ready for the decade? Because when PK said this thing in January, he thought we saw it, we thought it was abstract because PK talks very abstract. But we abstract. see it playing out. But right now, now I am seeing it playing out, and I'm wondering, oh my God, somebody actually told me, but I didn't take it seriously. I mean, so what I've taken out of this is him saying that in essence, you you if you're broad-minded and nimble-minded, then you are the one who owns the decade. So you have to know that there are options. You can't limit yourself and say because certain mm -hmm. people are in power, then I don't have an alternative, and that's his explanation of power. So, yeah. I mean, I'm taking that away. So, it's not about some people being in power. I know that if someone doesn't give me this opportunity, there's another opportunity that exists. Right. And I'm not going to just So, I think it's just it. the realization that I, within myself, I am powerful I'm enough powerful. to yeah, make and there a are change. Options. Yeah, and I, yeah, like you said, I liked his clear definition of, of power. power. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's, it's direct and it's like um, ability to control 
behavior of people, of course, without violence, because he mm. mentioned something very important, that a powerful person multiplies value, and I think it's important it's that we know creation. that. And um, yes, I, I, I do agree with him. It's the first time I'm hearing him say this about the year, uh, 2020 being the year of the underdog, mm -hmm. and it's very easy for me to believe, because look how you much voices are, 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 are rising. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and that's why we have to be strategic. There's something he said about social media. Mm -hmm. Social media is actually a powerful tool, but some of us don't understand that it's a powerful tool. So when it I is. see a lot of people jumping on this back Black Lives Matter, I'm not quick to jump on protests and all of that. Why? Because sometimes, if you notice, amongst the 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 um, what's it called the the many people coming out, there's a lot of noise out there, and there are a lot of people taking advantage of the situation just to, yeah, for, just for to instance, push maybe their brand. They're not. Instance, they're not really about the There was this couple. Uh, they just had their wedding. And then, I don't know if you saw it on the gram, they just had their wedding and then straight from the altar, they came to join the campaign. And like really? they just made like the whole world just... People are just really tired and frustrated. I'm questioning it might be genuine, but for them to... I mean, if you really wanted to join the campaign, you can get your sneakers and change in, in the uh, uh, restroom of the altar or whatever. So what just, just, just come out. Do you have to what if come out to your wedding? No, it can't be passion. passion. You have come to be on. serious. And that's why for it's us, don't be moved, right? Be very strategic, right, about mm -hmm. your life. Be very strategic about where you're going. Because while we are here doing Have things, end things mind. are happening in the spiritual realm that you need to be conscious about. Mm -hmm. And you need to position yourself right. right. He says something about positioning uh, yeah. among voters. Like, yeah. it's not enough that you're just going no. to vote. Get a seat at the table. Yeah, of the decision maker. Exactly. 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 Remember he talked about masses, influencers, and then the cabal. So we need representatives in the midst of the cabal. Yeah. That's how the change starts. I think we can wrap it. We've had a very beautiful week. I mean, if you've not watched any show this week, I mean, this weekend, go to our YouTube page. But please, the repeat of this broadcast will air tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. PK, you have to think very deep for you to understand him. So, <laughs> yeah, so keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa 1 or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The day the power of love overrules love of power, the world will know peace. I pray that day will come because oh, people no, love power me. too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so see you live at 8 p.m. on Friday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.